All right, welcome to another edition of Hurricane Review, probably my least flattering angle I've done yet for a Hurricane Review. This will hopefully, one thing we're going to do either today or tomorrow is fixing up a computer so I have a camera with good audio and, you know, the angles are just more flattering, but right now you will be having to look up my nostrils for this Hurricane Review on this 5-1 win between the, over the Seattle Kraken and this really was a quintessential, I would say almost as close to a perfect game as you can get. And, you know, I think Carolina's special teams, they were fine, but they were, I wouldn't say struggling, but special teams is something that cost Carolina in the playoffs last year. So to see them kind of be the turnaround for this game in admittedly an easier point in the season is a really good sign. Because I'm thinking, you know, obviously it's only three games in, you're not guaranteed playoffs, but... Carolina's a team, the success of their season is dependent on the playoffs. So throughout the season, I'm going to talk about how this could translate to the playoffs. Carolina, though, was again playing another weaker team. That will change Thursday against Edmonton, who Carolina does send to play well against, because I think Edmonton's strengths play to Carolina's strengths more than Carolina's strength weaknesses play to Edmonton's. However, Calgary, I really do think, will also be a huge test. So Carolina playing three easy teams in Columbus, who's 0-3. San Jose, who were 0-2 when Carolina played them and, are now, and were now 0-3 after the game. And Seattle, who's had, a, I don't know if Seattle's had a single win yet. It's good that Carolina's been dominant and good against those teams, don't get me wrong. Carolina's doing what they should do when they play a weaker team in the standings, and that's getting those two points, so... It's great, however, the real test really starts with Edmonton. However, going in, three games in, I love Jacob Chatfield's game. I'll say that Jacob Chatfield, I think, has solidified himself to not be a healthy scratch in that core anytime soon. I mean, that could change in two or three games. But for right now, I do think Jacob Chatfield really does have that number six, number five D on lock because I don't think Brett Pesci or Brady Shea are going to come down. Nor should they, and Brent Burns and Slavin have been solid as well. Slavin, I think, is the best defensive defenseman in hockey, probably a top five defenseman in the league. Brent Burns is playing really well against Carolina. I think he's got a couple of assists. I'm looking forward to him getting his first goal. As a Carolina Hurricane, hasn't happened yet. However, that deep pair is playing well. But Jacob Chatfield, I think, is a perfect fifth defenseman. I wish Carolina brought back Brendan Smith, but with how well Jacob Chatfield has played, it's the same thing with the Nedeljkovic trade, but if we want to talk about the Nedeljkovic trade, that turn, horrible. However, Jacob Chatfield has shown that why Carolina didn't keep Brendan Smith. And to a lesser extent, Ian Cole. I mean, Ian Cole, I'm glad he's not on the team. I don't need a cloud over a Hurricanes roster player. The same way we kind of went through that with Tony D'Angelo, whether you agree with that dark cloud or not. The dark cloud around Tony D'Angelo was there, and it would absolutely, more deservedly so, be there with Ian Cole. And this previous scandal with Ian Cole, obviously, um, directly involved the Hurricanes. He should have left. But Brendan Smith is the one that I wish Carolina kept. However, I get why they didn't keep him, because they got Chatfield. Bear was an RFA. They didn't want to go to arbitration. And, you know, so that they have top 60 plentiful. Now, the second line in Carolina... This was almost their game, I think, in any other game. And then there's another player we'll get to. Has really shined. I did not want Natchez to be a hurricane. Natchez still does make plays where he avoids, you know, can't fit the physical style of hockey. He kind of still tends to avoid it. However, Natchez has played so well that it's justifiable. He He's basically another version of Jeff Skinner. Can it be annoying when they don't go into a corner, or kind of go out of their way to not lay a hit? Yes, but they're so good that sometimes they can get away with not really willing to go into the corners. And Natchez, for the past three games this season, has been playing unbelievable hockey, aside from plays that I don't like when players make, because I, I like the physical side of hockey, and I think to win you need to be a physical team. However, if Natchez proves me wrong while playing for the Hurricanes, I don't mind, and Natchez has played well enough that I think some of my bias is undeserved against him. I was campaigning for him to be traded, I'm now happy Carolina didn't, and Kaka Niemi has really so far solidified himself as a second-line center. However, when he's matched up against Kadri, I think that'll be the real, and Dreisaitl in back-to-back -back games, that's the real test for Carolina's second line for me. 
because they've played weaker teams whose depth isn't quite there yet. Uh, San Jose just started their rebuild. Seattle, I think, has played pretty well. But, you know, still the same thing with Seattle. And um, Columbus doesn't have any depth. They just have two scorers who, other than Johnny Goudreau, aren't re- Patrick Line hasn't really been scoring as much. So make of that what you will. But, yeah, so far those three games. And for me, this game, hurricane of the game. I said the first line was quiet. They respond with scoring the game winner last game. And this game really was Sebastian Ajo's game for me. He was back-checking, he was getting assists, he got a goal. I was thinking Ajo was the best Hurricane on the ice before he even scored the goal to go up 2-1, which I think was another game winner. So Ajo, I really do think, you know, he was making tape-to-tape pass on the power play. He had an unbelievable back-check. This was Ajo's game. Ajo is a player who I think is an elite level of can steal games. Ajo has reached that point. He did it a couple times last season. He does it three games into this season. And yeah, right now we're seeing exactly what we want to see. The young players are improving. The older players are still playing well. Right now, three games into smooth sailing. Is it going to be smooth sailing all 82 games? Absolutely not. Probably not even for this channel. So, I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, all good things so far in this 5-1 win. Carolina's winning the games they're supposed to. They're doing well on a Pacific road trip, which is always tough. And we'll see how they do going up against Edmonton tomorrow and Calgary the day after that. But anyway, let me let me know what you guys think about the game. Let me know how good of a sign you think it is. If it's weaker teams, so we should just bypass it. The real season premiere is um, against Edmonton. If you feel that way, comment below. Or do you think it's a little bit of both? And yeah, if you guys like the content I'm producing on the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell to get notified when I upload. And yeah, hopefully with the Pacific Road schedule coming to a close in the next week, the the next day uploads won't be as prevalent. However, I can't make any promises with my hockey schedule. I'm going to be starting a new job soon. So yeah, uh, see you guys Thursday night probably or Friday morning or Friday afternoon, not morning.